Biker TV is brought to you by Classic Iron Motorcycle Museum, Lincoln Electric, Hogzotic Custom Cycles. Welcome to Biker TV, by bikers, for bikers. This week, Dino and the Dino Boys are at it again. Donnie's showing us how to haul ass with high-performance fuel injection. I'm hanging out with my good friend, Renee Charbonneau, a.k.a. Belt Drive Betty, for one of the coolest biker bashes I've ever been to, the Western Canadian Bike Builders Showcase. And Biker TV's Ride of the Week, I'm heading to Whistler with the Vancouver Harley Owners Group. But first, take it away, Dino. can do with this puppy. Um, we got a nice steep power curve is what we're looking for but tends to taper a bit here in the mid-range between 35 and 45. Trying to get this little dip out. You got from four grand up you got nice and steep from three to 45. It's just a little bit of a curve. We can try and get this thing to straighten up and meet here. Gain you, you know, eight or ten horse in the mid range here. And then you click it on, you can see from the time we hit this bottom row is in seconds. So within one second, we gained ourselves three horsepower. In two seconds, we gained ourselves eight horsepower. And within three seconds, we gained ourselves ten horsepower. Yeah, the bike's got a lot more uh, power, but they're more of a show than. Probably go, and this one's more of a go than show, so that's the way, that's the way this one's set up. So yeah, it should be interesting on the track. I always like that because there's always two different trains of thought. One guy got to have that pretty, pretty bike, and it's a world class, world beater, and then he gets his bubble burst. Take her in there a bit more. That's good, hold on. Shut it off. Well, again, we have one of these bikes that's just a wee bit too long, don't fit on the dyno. Uh, I'm gonna have to maybe see if there's an extended track I can buy for the front, the carriage for the front, but we're short by six inches. I guess the horsepower industry is gonna have to pick up on that because usually it was always keep short wheel bases, keep the power of the ground quicker and steers better. But we've kind of gone full circle in the Harley world and we like them long and lean. Flat and low. Okay, might as well wheel her back. We'll get this thing fired up here and see what kind of ponies we're putting out and see if we have any jetting recommendations. Alright, All right. let's see. I'd say this thing's jetted pretty damn close for a 95 inch or putting out uh, 93 horse and 99.4 foot pounds of torque. That's pretty good for a B twin cam motor being in street trim. I don't see any real, you can see in this graph here, there's no real glitches anywhere. It's pretty smooth all the way. Got a huge torque curve here, which is kind of, well, twin cams are famous for big torque. More than our horsepower, but it's kind of nice to see this thing making 90 horse at five grand. But I would say this thing's ready to go rock and roll. Let's go burn the tire off the prick and have some fun. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> you had it uh, on the dyno already today? Yes. And how'd that go? Uh, we got 90 horse today. Did it go faster? Uh, <laughs> I think everything can go there? faster. It's very decent and it was a smooth run. So 
we're going to talk about performance EFIR, performance fuel injection today, Tony. So how come we got this old dog then, Don? Well, a dog it is, but why would you call it a dog? Well, you've got bags, boxes, fairings, and gadgets. I'd say that makes it a dog. This bike is a dog. Um, and the reason being is, is because in 1995, that's when Harley Davidson first put fuel injection on Harley Davidsons, and they, they put them on the baggers first. So from 1995 to year 2001, they used what was called a Magneti Morelli fuel injection system. And this is the Magneti Morelli here. So what's the difference, Magneti Morelli and the new style Delphi system, Don? Well, Delphi is a new system, and it's a very good system, Tony. But Magneti Morelli, it leaked air, you know, so that sort of screwed everything up with the computer when the computer was telling stuff, it was getting false readings. So in the year 2001, that's when we really got to the fuel injection system that is very easy to make very fast. And that's called the Delphi system. Now, Tony, there are systems out there that a lot of people use, and they're very user-friendly, but they only modify the amount of fuel going in, and they ignore the spark and the emission timing. So the units we're going to talk about today, they do both, and that's what really makes these bikes fast. So the first one we'll talk about is the Power Commander. The Power Commander 3 is their latest version, and it modifies both fuel and spark. Now... We have to take a cable and we have to attach it to the, the electronic control module on this bike uh, via a computer cable and we put it into our computer and then we can go in and we can start modifying things. So that means I got to learn how to use a computer, right? But I do have good news for you. We have now what's called intelligent spark technology. Now what do you think that is, Tony? Like what's the intelligent part all about? Well, I'm not too sure, Don. Well, it self-tunes. Ah. So, it has uh, oxygen sensors in the exhaust pipes that read the exhaust gases. It can tell how much is being burned and therefore how much is being used. And these oxygen sensors send back the information to the computer. And the computer tells the injectors how much gas to put in and when for the spark plug to go off for, for the best performance application. The SNS unit also has an anti knock sensor. These bikes, because they run so hot, sometimes the spark plug goes off and the gas starts uh, burning across the combustion chamber, but it's so hot in there that there'll be spontaneous ignition somewhere else. And these two uh, flame fronts will come along and they'll collide. And it'll, uh, it sounds like uh, marbles inside your cylinders. And the Harley rider of today will recognize this as pinging or spark knock. So SNS has an anti spark knock sensor that tells the computer, wait a minute, it's pinging, we have spark knock in the cylinders, richen up the gas, cool it down a bit, so just the one flame front ignited by the spark plug is all that we have, and that's all we want also. Now, Tony, you know out back here, we've been using a new unit now called terminal velocity, and we're very happy with it. Again, it incorporates an oxygen sensor to read the exhaust gases, so we know exactly what's happening inside the engine. We don't have to know anymore because this self-tunes itself. You bolt the unit on, there's no more computers, there's no screwdrivers, there's no nothing. You bolt the unit on, you get on the bike, and you start riding it. You can feel the bike tuning itself while you're riding it. And that's where performance EFI is going in the future, Tony, and there's, we're going to make some really fast bikes. Well, it sounds like I still only have to turn the throttle, right? Yes, Tony, but you still have to learn to use a computer. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Thanks, Donnie. Stay tuned for some nasty bikes and a wicked Western Canadian bash. <laughs> Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Task Productions. Welcome back to Biker TV. Renee Charbonneau, a.k.a. Belt Drive Betty, had a dream, a huge bash to showcase Western Canadian bike builders. She made it happen, and what a party. Check it out. Mm. 
my name's Belt Drive Betty, also known as Renee Charbonneau. I'm the editor of a weekly biker's newspaper that serves Western Canada called the Busted Knuckle Chronicles. And it's been my dream since I can't remember when to put together a show that would bring my entire community together and be a celebration of the motorcycle. It's the first time a show like this has ever been done in the West where it's a celebration of the custom builders and the aftermarket industry. So you guys are the Cycle Boys. What's your name? I'm Derek. And you? Brent. Where are you from, guys? Uh, Brand Manitoba. Tell me about this bike. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's Brent's drop seat, uh, 300 rear tire, 124 TP in it, uh, right side drive, six speed. Um, basically wanted to build something that would blow people's minds, um, something that people say couldn't be done, and uh, we did it. It's, it's a daily driver. I like the name, Screaming Demon. Screaming Demon, what the devil rides. What the devil yeah. rides. Tell me about your bikes. Well, your, your typical choppers, big tires, big motors, big people, big fun. What about little people like girls? We can build small too. I'm Rhonda Olson with Pro Boys Choppers. And you, sir? I'm Warren from Pro Boys Choppers. What got you into building bikes? Uh, I've owned motorcycles all my life. Um, I have a experience or a lot of time in open wheel race cars and uh, eventually turned a hobby into a job. It's a good way to destroy a, a good hobby. How do you think this, this event's done so far? I think it's great for the first year and I hope to see it become a better and bigger thing. And it would be nice to put the challenge out for the Eastern Canadian to battle it out with the winner of the Western Canadian, get it all Canadian and then let's go compete against the world. Everybody from the West is probably 30 or so shops in the Lower Mainland are making some excellent product. And uh, it's about time Canada gets some of its own recognition because uh, we're up here and uh, some of us are mainstayers in the old game as well. We came up here to support the uh, custom show because there's not enough of that in Canada. And uh, we really want to expand on the custom exposure. And uh, it's really nice to see some of the quality of work out here. 11 Harley that we built, it's... Uh, Pretty unique, there's not a lot of them around. It took us uh, about 10 or 15 years to finish it. We just finished it this spring. So we'll see if we can make it run here. It's quite a procedure, but we'll give it a shot. What's the best thing about being at the bike show? It's why? Get your butt up here, lovely. <laughs> I am feeling so pleased. I cannot believe how well this has gone for a first time event. Stay tuned. Lots more Biker TV coming at you. I almost think we need to change the show from the Western Canadian Bike Builders Showcase to the amazing Western Canadian because these people are phenomenal. We have two levels of judging, the people's choice. Everybody that comes through the show gets to vote on which bike in each set of tents is their favorite. And then what we call the Builder to Builder Award. And that's where Eric Gorgeous and Roger Goldammer come into play. They will be going through the tents um, both days and the two of them are gonna decide which two bikes are going to be the winners of the Builder to Builder Awards in each category. 
What's, uh, what happened to you? Oh, just a small the, knee infection. Oh. Got up easy this time. Wasn't wasn't many of my numerous bike wrecks. I'm a better bike builder than I am rider. That's good of you that you still came out and covered this cool event, even though you're in pain. Well, yeah, I promised I'd be here, and uh, my, my wife damn near killed me when I was about to leave, but. Uh, she knows what I'm all about too. So she is important to me to be here. I know there are, you know, younger bike builders all over Canada who have devoted their lives as well to uh, their craft, the craft of building bikes. A bike show is not about the competition to me. It's a gathering of like-minded people showing off their wares and getting some enjoyment out of it. Nothing better for me than to have someone uh, crawling underneath my bike saying here come here joe check this out that to me what it's all about just uh, like i said like a gathering of like-minded people so you're uh you're like internationally famous sturgis daytona what brings you to grand prairie oh we're coming up here they have the the western bike build off this year and ask us to come up and help them judge it and just hang out and enjoy the nice sunshine and <laughs> it nice is beautiful people. today. Yeah, nice people. It's probably one of the one of the better organized events I've been to. I mean, for a first year event, it's very very well organized. Yeah. You know, she's, they've done a lot of thought into everything. You know, they've put a lot of time into it. You can really tell. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, how long have you been building bikes? I started Voodoo Choppers in '99, and we do probably six to eight, uh, you know, full ground up bikes a year and. We do sheet metal work and frames and some parts for people and other builders and you know, just keep having fun. What got you into it? Uh, bikes was always like a hobby, you know, something I just enjoyed doing and playing with and it just sort of manifolded from there. One thing led to another. Well, you do well. Your bikes are just beautiful. Thank you very much. has been my dream come true and it came true completely and totally came true stick around for a ride to whistler bc with the vancouver hog chapter Welcome back to Biker TV. I'm here in the big city, Vancouver, BC, at Trev Dealey Harley Davidson. I've met up with the Vancouver Harley Owners Group. They're going to take me on a ride to Whistler. The weather's beautiful. Everybody's gearing up, ready to ride. So let's get this show on the road. We want to be nice and safe, get back. Let's have a good time. Everybody knows we're heading up towards Whistler. We're going to go up the upper levels highway. From here, we're going to head up uh, through the, the Upper Levels Highway uh, over North Vancouver, West Vancouver, head over to Horseshoe Bay, and then up through the Sea to Sky Highway all the way up through uh, to uh, Whistler. Wow, that sounds beautiful. Whistler's gorgeous. Absolutely. At this time of year, it's beautiful up there. Voodoo love. 
beautiful. Perfect. What a beautiful day. That was an amazing ride. Special thanks to Terry Ray and the team at Trev Dealey Harley Davidson. Helmets off to the Vancouver Harley Owners Group. Biker TV is back next week with all the usual suspects. I'm riding around Edmonton with the Harley Owners Group, and we're heading to Mission BC for some top fuel drag racing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Biker TV. Biker TV has been brought to you in part by. Motorcycle Mojo Magazine, the Canadian Biker Build-Off, Victory Motorcycles.